Hi, I'm Chris. I'm going to do a demo on vacuum bagging to go with an article on the same subject. And I have this mold that I found on a shelf for a sink. I haven't used it in years. I'm going to pretend that I'm going to do a back test on it and start off by putting a little bit of breather on there just so the vacuum will be able to flow underneath. Then I'm going to talk about how to make the bag so it will fit. Because there's a lot of volume in the middle, if I make a bag the same size as the perimeter of the mold, it's going to be too small and it's going to get pulled in, bridge in all the corners. So to find the minimum size of the bag, I tape, I'm very rough. I'm going to measure both dimensions. About 36 inches one way and 32 inches the other and I would add a minimum of about a foot to each direction in order to make sure the bag is big enough because having a bag that's too big is an awful lot better than having a bag that's not big enough so I have a piece of vacuum bag right off the roll, 60 inch roll, and just going to use the roll width because the off cut would be a tiny little strip. And the important part is that I'm putting the mastic on the bag instead of on the mold. In a case like this, if you put the mastic on the mold, you have to come back and put darts along the perimeter and it ends up being a lot easier just to put the mastic directly on the bag this is something that took me a while to figure out so putting the mastic on the bag just a little bit in from the edge and i've got a piece here that's about five feet by four feet and it's going to be plenty big enough. Look at the corners. Okay, and one important thing to do once you've got the bag with mastic on it, just quickly cut the excess bag off as close to the edge of the mastic as possible because that flap of bag that gets sucked under will stick between the mastic and the bag itself and there'll be a little spot where there's no adhesive and it could be a leak. Now I've got a bag, there's plenty big enough. If you look at it, it looks huge. And it is bigger than it needs to be. It's always better to have more bag than not enough bag. I have a bag made and I'm going to place way off in one corner where, where it would be clear of resin bottom of my vacuum connector. And carefully put the bag over the top and place each corner. And I've left the cover on the tape. I'll pull back just the corner 
in each of the four corners. Pin those down. Right now it looks like I have way too much bag. And I do. And the, one of the main goals is to keep the bag as symmetrical as possible. And I would go so far as to draw a grid on the bag. If you're doing a complicated part for the first time, you want to make sure you don't have the bag skewing in one direction or the other. That can help. And then what I'm going to do is find each edge and place the middle. Because this is symmetrical, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close. And then right up to this vertical edge, I'll bring it in and make a huge dart or pleat that will give enough extra bag to fill in all of this. And then I'll do the same on each edge. Being careful not to get any bag stuck between the mold and the tape. A little flap of bag can make a little leak. And right now I'm not going to press it down too hard or seal any of the pleats. I'll use the term pleats as darts interchangeably. Uh, leave them open because I want to make sure I've got it right. By placing the middle, I'm ensuring that I'll have symmetry and that I won't get the bag skewed off one way or the other. One of the biggest challenges in vacuum bagging complicated shapes besides not having enough bag, it's having the bag in the wrong spot. So I'll work around placing each of these. And this has got my last side open. It's a good time to make sure everything under the bag is in good shape. There's nothing really under this bag except some breather fabric. But if there were a part under there, this would be my last chance. So once I have everything there, you can see I've got plenty of bag, I can push it around. plenty for everywhere and that's much better than having not enough. So now I'll go ahead and seal these pleats making sure that the mastic is pressed against each other. This is a case where having put the tape on the bag is nice because you have an automatic two layers of sealant in each dart and that just gives you a little extra. When you're sealing it up, it's a good time to check and make sure you put the vacuum fitting under the bag. It gets harder to put one in there once you seal it up. make sure there's no pressure, no tension on the bag anywhere because that will become a problem in the corners. It's okay. There's nowhere for that bag to go but down. 
which you really want to avoid stretching the bag over the part because it'll pull up the laminate if there's too much tension. So now I'm going to place the bag fitting here. I pull the bag tight over the fitting and just make a little snip with my scissors that I can insert the bag quick connect through. And turn on my pump. Bring my hose over. Making sure that the middle of the bag is pretty much in the middle. Let it start to suck down. And as it's going, I'm going to try to position the bag so that there is plenty of bag to form a, a little extra pleat over all of the inside corners. In this case, I have a little extra material around the top. This is so as the part gets compressed down, there's always plenty of bag to apply full vacuum pressure to the surface. So it is a good practice to make sure that all your inside corners have plenty of extra bag. And now it's coming down. Make sure that my fitting is nice and clean there. And each of my pleats is tidy. A little extra bag around the edge. Before it comes down too tight, this is a great time to go around, make sure there is extra bag right in the corner, all the way around. You can hear it leaping. It's fine. So run your finger along the edge. And making sure there's no tension on the tacking tape. You'll hear it suck down. And you can see sometimes on the inside edge of the jacket tape, a little fillet of air. And you'll know you've got it most of the way down. When you stop hearing hissing, when that little fillet is gone. So I can hear, I've got another one over the leaf. And on outside corners, like this part, I want to have fewer wrinkles, fewer pleats. There's going to have to be some, but any extra bag here just varies the pressure on the part. Now that I've got it down, if I had part under here, I would make sure that all of these inside corners have plenty of extra bag. If it were a part that were wet laid, and we're about to cure, which is critical. And if it were a pre crank part or one going in an autoclave, that would be even more important because the autoclave pop it in the evil. So now doesn't really look like I had too big a bag after all. If there's one takeaway from this, it's always make the bag a little bigger than you think it should be.